Hello, my name is Evgeny Frolov. I'm a fellow scientist at Skoltech. Today, I will tell you about using hyperbolic geometry in building recommended systems. I would like to start with a, some remarks on what principles and special features allow to increase quality in these systems. We see a modern trend that solutions become more and more sophisticated. I'm talking about deep learning solutions. They have more and more layers, they add heuristics, they use special losses and other tricks to significantly complicate the architecture, they become harder to set up and support in a product environment. On the other hand, as uh, analysis of papers show, there are some solutions that achieve comparable or even higher quality without using sophisticated mechanisms to build a solution. As an example, I use uh, research by Nikolopoulos and uh, Karipas. They show that a simple linear model with a random walk on graphs with a small tree call share allows to increase the quality significantly and the benefit in quality will be much more pronounced than benefits brought by modern deep learning solutions over certain baselines like matrix factorization. The main ingredient here, the special feature, is that the authors pre-build a better item model. This is a way to use a data set and predefine connections between items, goods in this case, to later increase the quality of, of the solution's uh, results. This connection, these connections are basically defining the nature of the data. Thanks to this approach, we can get really good results. And now you might ask, why hyperbolic geometry? Well, basically, it turns out that if, if we want to model the nature of the data, the connection is pretty straightforward, and we can uh, show it through these three points. The standard filtration algorithm task can create a graph of interaction between users and items. This graph will be spread uh, via a power law, or non, another non-uniform uh, spread along the nodes of the graph. Such graphs generate complex networks. It's a term that means, well, you know, all networks that are simple, that follow a uniform spread, they that not, don't follow a uniform spread, that are complex. Now, Krikov's work showed that such complex networks are very well modeled, assuming that objects of such networks are found in a space with a hyperbolic geometry. Before I begin, I need to introduce some formal terms first. So, hyperbolic space is an n-dimensional Riemannian manifold with constant negative curvature that produces a whole range of useful qualities. There are several models, they're all isomorphic, meaning you can switch between them, mostly for convenience. The main model that we will use in my report is a poincaré bowl model. The formal definition was on the right. Now, what you should pay attention to here is that we introduce a conforming factor, lambda x, that has singularity on the border of the ball. You can also parameterize the space, because it has a 
constant curvature, you can set it up and define inside the space. And in practice, you can actually pre-calculate it based on the set of data. We'll talk about it if we have the time. Now, this definition can also produce another range of uh, useful qualities. First of all, we need the singularity of the space itself. The space itself is exponentially growing the closer it gets to the border. Thanks to this quality, we get another practical quality, is that we can embed almost any kind of tree-like structure or hierarchy. This is the most useful quality. You can even say that this solution, this quality makes hyperbolic uh, space useful for modeling a global structure of the data. As for an example, I can show this intuitive picture. On the left we have a map of a standard collaborative filtration. We have users interacting with the goods, products. We have a non-uniform spread, some, meaning some goods are more popular, which is the short head. Some are less popular, and there are usually more of them in a catalog. If you use popularity as a term, you can easily imagine a certain tree-like structure, where in the center we'll find more popular goods, very few of them, and on the borders, on the outside, we'll see less popular niche goods. I believe this example is clear. Now, how do we build a model? Something that would allow us to model such a structure. For this, we should start with a regular run-of-the-mill autoencoder. We take user sessions. The user ID is not really needed to be modeled here. We just assume that a user is a set of uh, goods they have in their cards or in their session. Here's the signal, what goods they have interacted with. It becomes the input signal for the autoencoder. The autoencoder is really simple here. There's an input layer, a single hidden layer in the center, and one output layer. Now, like I said, the autoencoder itself exists in the Euclidean space and will not allow us to model the qualities I mentioned. It won't give us the hierarchy in a clear way. And if you check the papers, the research, such architectures are never used. This autoencoder is really bad at that. It doesn't give you any adequate quality. Even the simplest working solution already has additional tricks. For example, one of the first works uh, from 2015 used an autoencoder with a signal with a noise reduction. The authors had to use it to get at least any kind of quality. We'll do it differently, though. We'll just replace the linear layer, the hidden one, with a similar one that exists in a hyperbolic space. What does that mean? That means that we redefine some operations, linear operations, like multiplication of uh, matrices with the vectors and uh, the summation of vectors. Now we move it to the hyperbolic space. It's done pretty straightforwardly, although the formulae might look really cumbersome. Still, there's a very uh, convenient uh, algebraic framework, hyperbolic addition. It allows us to perform all these operations. It gives us an alternative to the main linear algebraic operations that we can uh, use in hyperbolic space. Moreover, we employ one-to-one -one, uh, mapping, bijective map, exponential mapping, and it's inverse, logarithmic. That's enough to launch the solution. 
здесь я привожу некий такой here you will see a summary of uh, our solution an overview this is a fully connected fit forward network with a single linear hidden layer that lives in a hyperbolic space. When we get a signal from a user, we think it's just one. No signal, zero. We use a standard BCE loss. And there's also a line of uh, additions. For example, we can make it uh, variational. That requires additional actions, but it's not too complicated. In our work, we've employed that solution. You can also pre-calculate, pre-estimate space curvature to find the structural connections more precisely. Also, there's some variation, some choice of what we can calc how we can calculate the hidden layer. I said, like I said, we can use. Uh, Mobius uh, summation to add bias, we can do it in two ways. We can believe that bias is found in Euclidean space. We can first project it into hyperbolic space and then add to the uh, multiplication result. Or we can assume that our bias is already in hyperbolic space and then we can do the operation directly. So, Basically, that describes the model that we're using. And now let's see the results. One of the first results is convergence. Something that I found surprising, to be honest. X-axis shows the number of epochs to find to reach a top 3% in quality. Y-axis, top to down, top to bottom, starts with a regular linear autoencoder and our variations. Mobius uh, addition and different... Uh, curvature constants. We see that the standard linear autoencoder, the top part of the axis, needs at least 20 epochs to finally converge and uh, achieve an adequate level of quality. The lowest line is uh, one of the, our autoencoder variations. It needs less than five epochs, or around five, to achieve such a level of quality. So we need a faster speed of convergence for this solution. Okay, convergence is fine, but what quality do we get? The results are quite interesting here too. Since you can see here the comparison between a standard linear autoencoder, Euclidean space, and two hyperbolic variations that we employ. You can see that the difference between the Euclidean and hyperbolic autoencoders is tremendous. Despite all the tricks trying to set up this linear Euclidean autoencoder, it was impossible. Like I said, it's really bad at that, it requires additional tricks. Our hyperlinear achieves adequ adequate quality without introducing additional sophistication to the architecture. Now, summing up, hyperbolic geometry enables to achieve very practical, lightweight architectures without losing any quality. It allows us to get uh, stable convergence quickly. The quality is uh, competing with the DL-based SOTA and it has a line of advantages in analytics. This architecture is very simple, only three layers, no additional tricks or heuristics used. If you want to know more, you can check our paper. The whole team is shown on the slide here. You can check the GitHub code or contact me and ask any questions. I'm also ready for your questions now. Thank you.